Hello, my name is Denise Cooper, and I am the founder and president of the Inner Source Commons. And my name is Georg Rütter. I'm the vice president of the Inner Source Commons Foundation. Denise and I would like to start a little tradition, something that we began with on the last summit in spring this year. That is to start the second day with a state of the inner source address. And in this talk, we would like to give you a sense of where we as a community stand and also use the opportunity to give kudos to those in the community who have made outstanding contributions to the inner source commons since the last summit. Let's begin with community stats. Obviously, we want this community to flourish and grow, and one way we keep track of that are the Slack metrics. This here shows the daily active members in green and the daily members posting messages in blue. And right away, you can see that the ratio between passive members, the green ones, and the active members is pretty good for open source standards. Another thing that we can see here is that our summits drive collaboration in our community. That's great, of course. And that's one reason why we have them. But we want to grow more, of course, and that is why we have our marketing and outreach working group that was established around the time that we had our last summit, I believe. The purpose of this group is to uh, kind of move the needle when it comes to inner source. Uh, in practice, that means growing and increasing the health of the community, increasing effectiveness of inner source practitioners, and of course, also promoting success stories related to inner source. Claire Dillon, who many of you know by now, is the person to get in contact with regarding marketing and outreach, outreach. And I'd like to use this opportunity to give a huge shout out to Claire. She's only been with us for a couple of months, but her contributions and her drive are really propelling this community forward. Thanks a lot, Claire. We're fortunate to have you on board. The next area of work that we want to highlight in our little talk today is about the learning path. This is a fabulous community effort that was started with a contract between PayPal and O'Reilly to produce some tutorial material. And um, the next slide shows you the four tutorials that we've completed so far. That includes uh, the intro to InnerSource, which is up in the upper left-hand corner there, the learning path for trusted committers, upper right-hand corner, the one for contributors, and one for product owners that Salona did. And um, the scripts for these things were built by the community, reviewed by the community. The resulting videos were read, you know, looked at and critiqued by the community. Uh, they eventually pulled together and created a workbook so that you can also read the material and there are comprehension questions in the workbook. And then people that were coming to, this, to InnerSource Commons found this material and started localizing it into their own languages. And that's really exciting. So we want to shout out to everybody that's been involved so far in the work of the learning path. It's a pretty large group of people. Um, it's just a fabulous, fabulous thing. And if you're trying to learn about InnerSource from scratch by attending this conference, you might want to find time to watch these things. They're, um, all told, it's about two hours worth of video, but it's broken up into little segments. So you can take a break if it, you know you need to. And as I say, that workbook is really useful too. And if you're interested in getting involved with the learning path, you want to contact Russ Rutledge, uh, who will be very happy to help you. And then there's the patterns group. This is the oldest working group we have in the Commons. It was started 2016 on the Inner Source Commons Summit in Boston by Tim Yao and Padma Sudarsan, and many Inner Source practitioners have contributed since then. Those of you who have looked at the material on GitHub will know what an invaluable source of knowledge it has become over the past years. And if you haven't looked at it yet, by all means, head over to GitHub and do so. But most importantly, contribute yourself. How can you contribute? Glad you asked. We have classified our patterns into a number of categories. Ultimately, we want all our patterns to be both proven and reviewed by the community. And we still have quite a few unreviewed or unproven patterns. And on top of that, we have unreviewed pattern ideas and what we call donuts, basically an inner source problem statement without a proposed solution. 
So I would like to invite you to participate in reviews to help prove patterns and, of course, to contribute your own pattern ideas and donuts. I would like to use the opportunity to call out four community members who have recently driven and made great contributions to the Patterns Group. And those are Johannes Tigges, Sebastian Spier, Maximilian Capraro, and Fai Wan. Thanks a lot, guys. Keep up the great work. If you have questions regarding the Patterns Group, Johannes and Sebastian are the ones you want to talk to. Thank you so much, Gehrig. That was great. Now let's do some news from the board. This slide shows who the current board members are and also the current officers of the Intersource Commons Board. This board was seated in October of last year and we made a decision in February at our annual members meeting that we would leave the board in place until next year um, because we were just getting started and it seemed like the best thing to do at the time. Everybody gets along pretty well and Intersource Commons is still pretty small, but um, there will be an election coming up and uh, some of these faces will change in that. Um, but these are all great folks who've been around since the founding of Intersource Commons and have shown you know, really excellent uh, work on the project. Let me explain that members and board members are different things. Um, these people were elected to the board but they are also the founding members of the organization. But in February at our general meeting, we actually voted in three new members. They were Jacob Green, Klaus-Jan Stoll, and Johannes Tigas. All three of them were voted in in recognition of work that they had done for the foundation in the preceding year, years actually. And that's what membership is. Membership is people who have shown not only an interest in learning for their own benefit, but an interest in furthering our mission of providing this education to more and more people. And uh, we are, of course, going to be nominating new members and voting them in uh, every general meeting, which is once a year. Um, this last one was in February, and we will be doing one in Q1 2021. So if you're interested in membership or being in, more involved, the way to do that is get involved with the foundation, start working on one of the committees, start, you, you'll get the feel for it very quickly. We think that it's a really nice community. Uh, we would like you to come for the methodology and stay for the community. And we're all friends now. And we, we share a vision of Intersource being the way that most engineers work uh, in another you know, hopefully not 20 years, hopefully it'll happen faster than that. Um, so now it's time to get back to the summit. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that you learned some stuff. Um, we are answering questions in the chat as we go along here, but if you have any burning questions that you really want to ask, now's the time to tell the moderators and um, see you in the rest of the summit. <laughs>